a construction worker is hurt in an unshored trench uh, on a construction site in which all of the companies are working under AIA form contracts. Which of the following is true? The worker may sue the architect who, uh, and who wins will depend on the architect's actions at the job site. The worker cannot sue the architect successfully because there is no contract between them. The primary defendant in the worker's lawsuit is usually the worker's employer who has primary responsibility for its worker's safety. Or D, the claim must be resolved in arbitration or mediation rather than litigation in court because the AIA form contracts contain mandatory arbitration and mediation provisions. Well, D is certainly true to the extent that the uh, contracts do contain those elements, the arbitration or mediation uh, provisions. But if you look back at the question, the question is a construction worker. It doesn't say that there's a dispute between the entity of a subcontractor and a general contractor or the general contractor and, a, and the owner or anything like that. This is not a contractual uh, set of relationships. This is some guy was standing there and the floor fell in. Uh, and he got hurt. Of course he can sue. He can sue anybody, right? So could you. You could fall on a job site and something goes wrong, right? You can sue. Somebody can come to your office or your house, trip on the stairs, and they can sue you, right? That's we're a litigious, litigious society. Um, that's certainly their uh, option. They can do that. So um, while D sounds sort of uh, like it has um, kind of seriousness to it, it is in fact not possible for that to be the correct answer. Uh, and then the same would be true um, if you look at C, the primary defendant in the worker's lawsuit is usually the worker's employer who has primary responsibility for its worker's safety. Well, first of all, who really cares? Because uh, that doesn't really apply. Like you can sue whoever the hell you want to sue. Um, doesn't mean you win, but you can sue anybody. Uh, the other thing to say is that's actually not even necessarily true, right? If I'm, the, again, the plumber on the site, it might be the GC that has my primary uh, safety responsibility, uh, or even some entity that's actually there specifically to provide safety on a job site. Um, so, this, so C is definitely not it. Um, and then we look back at uh, A and B. Let's look at B. The worker cannot sue the architect successfully because there is no contract between them. Well, there wasn't any contract between the guy that fell on your stairs uh, and you either. They still sued you. Uh, so that definitely isn't it. So it really comes down to A. And if you think about it, A makes a ton of sense. The worker may sue the architect and who wins will depend on what the architect's actions were on that job site. So what that's saying is if you've been walking around the job site saying you should put a handrail over there and this thing is dangerous over here, you should fix that or this, uh, this uh, electrical wire, you, you know, you're going to hurt somebody, that thing's a live wire, you should do something about that. What you have essentially done by walking around the site saying those things is saying, yes, I am in charge of all the safety on the site. And so when something goes wrong, you're still in charge. Uh, those are being in charge of the safety on the site is part of means and methods. That's part of the contractor's job. But if you have claimed it, uh, and therefore your actions on the site, if you have claimed that, uh, that job of being the safety by, by calling things out, uh, then you could actually uh, lose that suit. Um, if you've done it by the book, then you won't lose that suit and the worker will hopefully find some other place to get their, their cash money. Um, this is one of those ones I'm sure everybody's, things are going through everybody's heads, well, what if I see a really dangerous situation? It won't ever be that great. Like it'll be set up, the question will be set up in such a way that you won't be tricked. It'll be a clear situation that you either have liability with it or don't. Uh, a is the answer because it's all about what you did on the job site. Did you take control of safety or did you do the right thing and, and let the contractor take control of safety through the whole project? Um, and if you don't have any reason to be uh, sued, then they can still sue you. They can sue anybody they want, but uh, uh, there's no reason why you would think you would lose. Now, thank you, Mike, uh, and thanks to all of you who have tuned in. And if you'd like to attend our next ARE live broadcast, visit blackspectacles.com slash podcast to register. Uh, you'll have a chance to ask questions and share your answers with Mike for live feedback during the broadcast, just like today. Um, and to learn more about our AIA ARE prep curriculum, go to blackspectacles.com. Uh, we'll uh, include, a note, uh, include a link in the show notes. Uh, and for those of you who are ready and, and want to go ahead and get busy preparing for the ARE, 
Uh, you can use a coupon, uh, a 15% coupon off the first charge on any AIA ARE prep membership with code 527-15-WEBINAR. That's 527-15-WEBINAR. Uh, and that'll expire on June 15th. Um, and of course, if you're already an AIA member, you can visit AIA.org slash ARE prep to get a 30% discount for the entire duration of your AIA ARE prep membership, not just the first charge. Um, and that also uh, expires on June 15th. Um, and finally, uh, please leave a comment below the video to let us know what you think um, and share any suggestions um, that you may have. I promise uh, we'll read every word that you write and use them to tune our next episodes. Uh, so thanks for watching. <laughs>